Did you know that Godzilla, the King of Monsters, was originally a metaphor for nuclear weapons? Let's take a step back in time, all the way to the mid-20th century. The year was 1954, and Japan was still nursing the wounds of the recent World War II. The nuclear bombings of Hiroshima and Nagasaki had left an indelible mark on the nation's psyche. Amidst this backdrop of devastation and recovery, a monster was conceived, one that would go on to become a cultural icon worldwide. This creature's name, Godzilla. Godzilla was born in the imaginative minds at Toho Studios, but the inspiration for its creation was far from fictional. This colossal beast was a direct response to the nuclear bombings that had ravaged the cities of Hiroshima and Nagasaki less than a decade prior. Godzilla was not merely a monster, it was a symbol, a metaphor for the destructive powers of nuclear weaponry that had been unleashed upon the world. At its core, Godzilla was a manifestation of the fears and anxieties of post-war Japan. It was a metaphorical representation of the horrors of nuclear warfare, a raw and unfiltered commentary on the devastating consequences of such destructive power. This nuclear monster embodied the collective trauma of a nation, its towering stature and destructive prowess serving as a stark reminder of the nuclear catastrophe that had befallen Japan. But Godzilla was more than just a symbol of destruction, it was also a symbol of resilience. Despite the destruction it caused, Godzilla was invariably defeated, only to rise again, stronger and more formidable. This cycle of destruction and rebirth was a reflection of Japan's own journey, a nation that had been brought to its knees, only to rise again, stronger and more resilient. So the Godzilla we know and love today started as a symbol of destruction, a monster born from the ashes of nuclear warfare. But as we'll see in the coming scenes, this nuclear monster would evolve, its image and symbolism transforming with the times, just like the nation that gave birth to it. But Godzilla didn't stay a terrifying symbol of nuclear holocaust for long. As the swinging 60s rolled in, the world of cinema began to evolve, and so too did our favourite colossal creature. The image of Godzilla underwent a dramatic metamorphosis. Gone were the days when Godzilla was merely a symbol of dread and destruction. The monster's terrifying demeanour was reimagined, gradually transitioning into a more child-friendly character. In the mid-60s and throughout the 70s, Godzilla started to star in a series of films that were far more campy and action-packed than their predecessors. This shift was a conscious decision by filmmakers to appeal to a younger audience. After all, who doesn't love a good monster movie? The films of this era took a lighter approach, showcasing Godzilla as a sort of superhero. This was a far cry from the initial incarnations, where Godzilla was a fearsome, unstoppable force of nature. Now, the King of the Monsters was seen engaging in slapstick comedy, dancing and even having a son. The creature that once embodied our deepest fears and anxieties was now a source of amusement and fun. Godzilla's image was no longer that of a horrifying beast, but rather an oversized, lovable hero. This was a Godzilla who would rather wrestle with other monsters in a display of theatrics than lay waste to cities. And it wasn't just Godzilla's personality that changed. The monster's design also evolved to match this new persona. The terrifying visage was replaced with a more friendly appearance, complete with large, expressive eyes and a less menacing demeanour. This transformation was met with mixed reactions. Some fans missed the old, terrifying Godzilla, while others embraced the new, fun-loving version. Regardless of the reaction, one thing was clear. Godzilla had become a versatile character, capable of being both a hero and a villain, depending on the story. As Godzilla's image softened, he became a hero rather than a villain, fighting off other monsters to save humanity. The once fear-inducing Godzilla had now become a symbol of strength and protection, illustrating the ever-changing nature of our beloved King of the Monsters. In 1998, Hollywood decided to take a crack at the Godzilla franchise with mixed results. The American adaptation, directed by Roland Emmerich, sought to bring the iconic character to Western audiences. Yet, it did so in a way that was markedly different from the Japanese films that had come before. The American Godzilla showcased a radical departure in design, a more dinosaur-like creature that was faster and more agile. It was a far cry from the lumbering upright beast that had become a symbol of post-war Japanese cinema. 
This new Godzilla was leaner, meaner and more predatory, a characterization that did not sit well with some fans. Beyond the creature's physical appearance, the American adaptation also strayed from the original character's purpose. The Japanese Godzilla was a metaphor for the destructive power of nuclear weapons, a tragic figure embodying the fears and anxieties of a nation scarred by atomic bombings. The American Godzilla, on the other hand, was portrayed as a mere monster, a primal force of nature, devoid of the depth and complexity that made the original so compelling. This departure was met with a wave of criticism. Fans and critics alike felt that the American adaptation had missed the mark. It had taken a beloved icon, a character steeped in cultural significance, and turned it into something unrecognisable. The film was accused of being more interested in spectacle than substance, a charge that was not entirely unfounded, given its heavy reliance on CGI and action sequences. Yet despite the backlash, the 1998 American Godzilla was not without its merits. It was a box office success, raking in over $379 million worldwide. It introduced a whole new generation to the Godzilla mythos, even if that introduction was somewhat skewed. While it was a box office success, the 1998 film was a disappointment to many Godzilla fans, who felt it failed to capture the essence of the original monster. The American adaptation of Godzilla serves as a fascinating case study in cultural translation, a reminder that not all adaptations are created equal. In 2014, Godzilla roared back onto the big screen in a big way. This year marked a significant turning point for our beloved monster, with a fresh cinematic portrayal that both honoured its roots and embraced the modern era. The 2014 and 2019 Godzilla films, directed by Gareth Edwards and Michael Doherty respectively, sought to breathe new life into the franchise. They delved deeply into the character's origins, tying it back to the destructive force we first met back in 1954. Yet they also sought to modernise Godzilla, reshaping it for a new generation of moviegoers. A key aspect of this modern interpretation was the design of Godzilla himself. The filmmakers envisioned a creature that was both terrifying and awe-inspiring. They struck a delicate balance, creating a Godzilla that was a nod to the original, yet unmistakably a creature of the 21st century. The design team worked meticulously, factoring in the advancements in special effects and CGI to create a Godzilla that was more realistic and visually striking than ever before. Beyond the design, the films also returned to Godzilla's destructive origins. The 2014 film saw the monster wreaking havoc across the Pacific and causing untold destruction in San Francisco. Similarly, the 2019 film Godzilla, King of the Monsters showcased Godzilla as a force of nature, battling other titanic creatures and leaving cities in ruins. But the modern interpretation didn't stop at Godzilla. These films also reintroduced other classic monsters from the Godzilla mythos. Mothra, Rodan and King Ghidorah all made appearances, adding depth to the universe and expanding the franchise's lore. These new films have reinvigorated the Godzilla franchise, bringing the King of Monsters back to his rightful place in pop culture. They've not only paid homage to the past, but have also paved the way for future stories, ensuring that Godzilla will continue to roar in our hearts and on our screens for years to come. From a symbol of nuclear devastation to a pop culture icon, Godzilla has come a long way. Let's take a stroll through time and see how our beloved monster has grown and changed over the past 70 years. Starting off as a horrifying embodiment of nuclear disaster in the 50s, Godzilla was a creature born from mankind's worst fears. This colossal beast was a dark reminder of the destructive potential of nuclear power, an echo of the horrors experienced in Hiroshima and Nagasaki. But with time, the image of Godzilla began to soften. In the 60s and 70s, he transformed from a terrifying force of nature into a more approachable figure, often seen battling other monsters and sometimes even playing the role of a hero. This change mirrored the shifting cultural perspectives of the time, reflecting society's growing fascination with the extraordinary and the supernatural. This was not the end of Godzilla's transformation, though. 
In the 90s and early 2000s, Godzilla once again donned the mantle of a threat, albeit with a more complex and nuanced character. He was no longer just a mindless beast, but a creature with depth and motivations, reflecting our growing understanding of nature and the creatures that inhabit it. Moving into the 21st century, Godzilla has continued to evolve, becoming a true pop culture icon. From comic books to video games, from merchandise to theme park attractions, his towering figure looms large across popular media. His cinematic journey has been one of continuous reinvention, each iteration adding a new layer to his enduring mythos. The impact of Godzilla on pop culture is undeniable. His story has influenced countless other monsters, inspired numerous spin-offs, and left an indelible mark on the world of cinema. The franchise's longevity is a testament to its enduring appeal and its ability to adapt and grow with the times. Whether he's a terrifying symbol of nuclear destruction or a beloved pop culture icon, one thing remains clear. Godzilla truly is the king of monsters.